Hello everybody, my name is Farfan and welcome to the Balloon Tower Defense 6 Lab. This is where I conduct and share all my experiments aimed to discover the best strategies, towers and powers for every situation. Today I'm going to be sharing my findings on the best in-game cash generating tower, taking into consideration the cost of the tower, its upgrades, its popping power and how much cash it generates. I'm going to be ranking the qualifying towers on a tier list from D to S, D being the worst and S the best. A quick disclaimer, this is just my opinion and what I feel is an accurate tier list. Feel free to debate the results you know, in the comments, but please keep it polite. With that said, let's look at the towers that qualify for this tier list. First of all, we have Oban Greenfoot's Wall of Trees ability. There's Benjamin's Siphon Funding, the Sniper Monkey's Supply Drop, the Merchant Man Buccaneer, Support Chinook Heli Pilot, Lead the Gold Alchemist, Spirit of the Forest Druid, all three upgrade paths of the Banana Farm, Monkey Business Village, and finally the Engineer's Balloon Trap. So starting off at the front of this list we have Oban. He's one of my personal favourite heroes, currently holding the title for the most used hero on my account for good reason. I'm really putting Oban in the S tier, his early game is very strong, being able to solo the first 20 rounds in most scenarios. His pop and power does fall off considerably towards the mid and late game, but his Wall of Trees ability which he gets at level 10 is so very strong. It's the main focus of this video because it can absorb around 5 mobs and generate 4000 bananas each time. That kind of contribution during the mid game is massive. His ability doesn't get a major buff again until about level 20 but it's worth the wait. I know on more difficult maps that can be a struggle but it can absorb up to 9 mobs and generate 7,000 bananas each time. Don't get me wrong, I feel the pop and power fall off is quite large but 7,000 bananas every few rounds goes a long way which is why he belongs in the S tier. Benjamin is next and I'm going to be putting him in the C tier. He's never really been on my radar until I made this video. His inability to pop any balloons has always bothered me but there's no denying he's a good cash maker when used right. You may not directly notice the cash he gives you but his income is very good for the price you pay for him. Even at a low level he's more efficient than an unupgraded banana farm. When he's at a higher level he gives a boost to banks which is by far the most efficient source of income if you collect them when they're full. The issue for me is that he relies on banana farms to reach his maximum potential and this lack of popping power means you struggle to get him online as early as other heroes. For this reason I do feel he belongs in the C tier. Right, up next we've got the Supply Drop Sniper. I'm going to put the Sniper Monkey in the C tier. I love this tower and its upgrade path but when I compare it to the others I just feel it takes too long to actually generate anything substantial. It costs 8k for the tier 4 and then another 14k for the tier 5 just for a 1k cash boost per round. Don't get me wrong, it's popping power and the Sniper Monkey buffs are great which is why it's not lower but the time it takes to come online compared to the others just isn't good enough. Okay, now we're on to the Merchant Man Buccaneer. This one I'm going to be putting in the A tier. The Buccaneer is a great cheap early to mid game money maker generating 200 cash around at tier 3 and 500 at tier 4. It also has decent popping power and the ability to pop camos and metals if you need. I'm not sure I'm such a big fan of the 5th tier upgrade as it does require additional Merchant Man to get any benefit and I don't often see the need to place more than one which is why it doesn't break into the S tier but it's still a very good unit. Okay so up next we've got the Support Chin heli pilot which is an interesting one I'm gonna be putting this one all the way down in D tier as it doesn't generate any cash until tier 4 which costs 12k in hard mode and even then you've only got a 50% chance to get a 1k cash box from its ability the tier 5 is very similar and although it does come with a high power marine and generate 4k cash the price tag is 32k and still you only got that 50% chance to make cash which makes it a weak money maker especially when the other crate only drops hearts which are rarely useful this unit bears pays for itself and I can't see it going anywhere higher than D tier. Right, the lead to gold alchemist is up next and I'm not going to lie, he's joining the heli pilot straight in D tier. I like the concept but if I'm being totally honest, during the early to mid game it's just not worth your time. It's got weak popping power, a low cash income and gets basically outclassed by everything else on this list. The only time I can condone using this unit is if you can afford to outright buy the 5th tier for 40k because that will win you games. It can turn late game balloons and mobs into red balloons which is so strong but the cash generation is still weak which is kind of the point of this video so I'm not putting him at any higher than D tier. The jungle bounty druid is next and this one definitely deserves to be high on the tier list. I'm thinking A tier and I'll tell you why. His popping power is very strong for the price and paired with the banana farms it can quickly pay for his tier 4 self. But that is the issue that's keeping it out of S tier for me. It relies on those banana farms to be successful which means 
means it can only truly benefit if you commit to a full money making build which limits what you can do especially on certain maps. The tier 5 on the other hand is broken. If you haven't tried it I highly recommend that you do and again the money it makes isn't half bad. Definitely worth the 38k price tag. Definitely deserves a spot in A tier. Up next is the top upgrade route of the banana farm. Just for the record, the banana farms all have zero popping power on the three upgrade routes, but they make up for that by offering high cash earnings. The top upgrade route has to be a top, top tower for me. It was built for making cash and does that in excellent fashion throughout the game. Personally, this is my favourite variant of the banana farm. I don't often play through a match without at least one of these on the go for some cash, so it's definitely at the top of S tier for me. The prices are fair and easy to earn back in quick fashion, and if you want, you can get away with just using the tier 3 upgrade for most of the match and still earn good profit. Okay, now we're on to the middle upgrade path of the banana farm. This one is a little controversial because I know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about this one. Some people love it, swear by it, some people hate it. I've tried it multiple times myself and personally I like it. I like it enough to put it in the A tier, but I think S tier is too high. It's by no means a bad money maker, the bank is a very strong tier 3 upgrade, but I find the tier 4 upgrade very underwhelming. You have to pay 8k in hard mode for a 10k loan from the bank, which has to be paid off over time. In certain scenarios this might be a lifesaver, you know, get the 10k early, pay it back, get another 10k, pay it back. That might work for some people, but I do think it's, very, it's a very niche situation that that is actually helpful. The tier 5 on the other hand is a return to good form. The ability it gets generates roughly 10k every round and for the 100k price tag which is a lot it does soon get paid off and start generating your money. I think A tier is where this tower belongs. The bomb upgrade roof of the banana farm is another great tower that just falls short of S tier. I like to think of this tower as the support support. It's not really that useful on its own but its ability to assist other farms is great. The collect radius of other banana farms is larger and for monkey banks it will glow red when the bank is full and ready to collect making it a very useful tool. At tier 4 it also buffs up merchantmen giving them an additional 10% income. In the right situations I love this tower and it is the cheapest of all three of the banana farms upgrade paths and can be a huge help but it doesn't make the largest amount of money overall and relies on other towers to carry it through meaning I just can't justify putting in the S tier. A tier is where this belongs. Oh, I love this tower. The monkey business village is a fun fun tower and I'm going to place it in B tier. It offers a lot of options especially if you get it up and running early because you can make the most of the discounts to build up your defences. For nearby towers and also be paired with jungle drums for faster attack speeds or radar scanner for camo detection which are two abilities that I can get behind. The third tier upgrade is great as for just 10k it gives you extra money per pop which soon adds up. The downsides to this tower though will keep it firmly in B tier. After the early game it's safe to say tier 1 and 2 discounts become mostly forgettable and the tier 4 and 5 upgrades are just not worth the money. The tier 4 gives you a 3 dart monkey every round which might be okay for some but I don't know anyone that needs more than 3 dart monkeys. And the tier 5 consumes any nearby banana farms freeing up space. Granted these upgrades only cost 3k and 5k respectively but offer no popping power or cash and I feel is a bit of a letdown considering the rest of the tower's strong start. So with all that said I will be putting this tower in B tier. I do love it but I just don't think it offers enough to be any higher than that. The final tower on this list is the Balloon Trap Engineer. I love this tower so much in Balloon Tower Defense 5, but in this game I do think it's lost a bit of power. Don't get me wrong, I'm still a firm supporter of it, which is why it's getting a spot in B tier. It's a cheap way to get a little bit of side cash, and the stuns it gives you from the pin and double gun upgrades are an outstanding way to help you in the early to mid game. It's never going to make you heaps of cash, but for the price, the popping power and the money made, it isn't too bad. I'm also a big fan of the tier 5 upgrade, it's a little pricey, it's 65k but it more than makes up for that with the cash generated. Honestly this thing eats up mobs and spits out 12k cash per box. When it's positioned right I do believe this tower is deserving of a spot in B tier. And with that I've gone through my rankings of every money making tower in Blue Town Defense 6. I'd love to hear your opinions and my choices in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.